Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. We're going through the spring training today, and we have a couple simple questions we're in search of. We're looking to see who our fifth starter in the rotation is going to be. Will it be the 24-year-old Cole Phillips, or could Gunnar Hoagland take over that spot? Or maybe the answer isn't even on the roster right now. We'll have to see. Is this bullpen ready to go for the start of the year? Do we feel good enough about our high leverage relievers and the 34-year-old closer, Domingo Acevedo? We're also going to take a look at some of the newcomers to the big league roster. We signed Fran Mill Reyes in the offseason, one of the only moves that we made. And we're also going to get a look, perhaps, at Luis Estrella, who was taken back in our first draft class of the series. By far, our biggest signing of the offseason was Logan Gilbert. We signed him away from the Seattle Mariners, and we have put together what I think will be a really strong rotation as long as that fifth rotation starter doesn't become a major issue. But Gilbert, Soroka, and of course Joe Michael, that gives us a really good 1-2-3 at the top of this rotation. Gilbert has been extremely steady. I like his style of play. You're not going to get a lot of variance. When he gets on the mound, you know what you're getting into. He's not going to strike a lot of guys out, but very few are going to reach on walks. Not many homers are hit off of him. He gets his outs, has a good start, and gives your team a chance to win. So we'll begin things with Logan Gilbert getting a chance to pitch here in the spring. Should only be a few innings. It's his first outing with the A's, but just want to get a feel for how he plays here. Throws a good fastball, has a five-pitch mix, including a 12-6 curveball, and that is just out of Vladdy's reach down the line for a base hit. But hey, you have to love a move whenever you can make your team better and also happen to make a rival team worse. Base hit to right field, and the Brewers quickly get two aboard. Well, we can see how he pitches with a couple runners aboard now. Can he get out of trouble? Circle change is in there for strike one. Let's use that slider, and he hung it, but strike two. The 0-2 is lined into right field, and a third straight hit will load the bases. Nice throw, Dylan, in right field. Dylan Carlson returning again for a second season here in Oakland. But three hits to the right side, loading the bases for Willie Adamas. Just hoping for something that we can make a play on this time. There we go, just a piece. You know, I, I like this archetype of pitcher, but when you have runners on, a strikeout is really what you're looking for. Oh, and two weekly hits, and they'll try to get two and do. But every ball's been hit to the first base side. Unfortunately, the run has already come around to score. And the Brewers are just swinging at everything here. That's the 10th pitch of the inning, and it's run down by the speedy Aaron Dawn. So an eventful first inning for Logan Gilbert. We'll move on to the second. And hey, we got our run support already. 2-0. By the way, we won our first two spring training games, and both of them were shutouts. So no one got runs off Michael or... Soroka, that tripped me up for a second because Joe Michael's last name is the first name of Soroka. Weird swing there by Paven Smith, but that'll be a strike. He doesn't walk many, doesn't mean he doesn't walk anybody. And this one again just drops into right center field. And that one is rolled over, so we can get two, maybe? Not this time. So far, he does feel like a very accurate pitcher. The ball, more or less, just goes where you want it to. And there's a lot of action here on this side of the defense. Oh, they got Jackson Chirillo up here. That's right, we're way into the future. I think he's been here for quite a while. Hey, a base hit through the 
left side this time. All right, so it is possible. Nice 12 6 delivered by Logan Gilbert. And the 2 2 is taken low, making the count full. Line to right field, and Carlson makes the play. So a couple more base runners. I'd like to get a 1-2-3 inning and then get out of here. I suppose the way Gilbert pitches, the ball's going to be in play a lot. And this is just kind of an example of what uh, can happen when luck is not on your side. A lot of stuff just found its way through. And oddly enough, just kept going to the same side of the defense. But I'm not too worried about that. All right, one more out here, please. Adamas, first pitch swinging. Not a very patient approach here for Milwaukee, but it's a 1-2-3 inning this time around. And no strikeouts recorded for Logan Gilbert. And his day is now done. And let's play with our only offensive addition from the offseason. And he's off to a good start already with a homer and a single in this game. I just felt like this team was missing a little something on offense. I wanted a good player that could come off the bench and deliver some power, get some spot starts maybe as the DH here or there. And I guess if you had to play in the field once in a while, like it's not ideal, but it's doable if his bat is that valuable. So we need some more pop. We relied on just a few players to deliver our power last year. Luis Arise, of course, Vladimir Guerrero, and then Tyler Soderstrom had the bulk of the home runs on this team. On the ground, and that is not where Reyes wants it. Now we have some relievers who are also trying to make it onto this active 26-man roster, and here is lefty Ricky Griggs. I want to say I acquired him in a trade many, many moons ago. Griggs is a lefty, and we could use some more good lefties. Getting a couple quick ones here for the second out. Two pitches and two outs. This guy is efficient. And a ground ball. Oh, Sweeney couldn't make the play. Thought we were going to have a four-pitch inning there. Not so fast. Oh, and now you're going to call the game or something? You're going to delay it? It's the Cactus League. It doesn't rain in Arizona. Well, this is an interesting opportunity then to get a look at a player that we haven't spent enough time talking about here. It's Elliot Hughes. Hughes was taken back in the first draft of the series, and he was an A potential pitcher, still is. 68 overall, he's getting close to being ready for a big league spot. Now, he's here for the first time at spring training because he was Rule 5 eligible. If I didn't add him to the 40-man, I risked losing him, and I just can't risk that on an A potential player. One thing here I find intriguing, he does have this slurve. That could be fun to use. Doesn't have the best velocity, he throws a sinker. So let's get a look here at Elliot Hughes. Now, the, the most likely scenario is he starts off as uh, a pitcher starting at AAA. But I think now you're just waiting to see when he's ready for that debut to come. And you hope sooner than later because he's already 26. He'll be making a debut uh, fairly late. Everybody I'm throwing with in this game just hits their spots so well. Throw in the slurve. Oh, in two, and we don't have a strikeout yet. So we come back with the sinker, and he's over the top for strike three. A little bit high to Sal Freilich as the count moves to three and one. Hughes fouled off in strike two. Let's see if it can put him away. No, the slurve is taken. How do you have that kind of plate discipline on a pitch that close? Base hit left field, and this one hit really hard for a ground ball at 104 off the bat. 
So, another jam. We've had our fair share of those in this one. We'll see if Hughes can pitch his way out of it. An 0-2 count, though, and you bet I'm going right back to that slurve. Out in front, and again, putting it in a really good spot. A lot of these young pitchers, they just kind of throw their breaking stuff with no regard for where it ends up. So it's a real risky pitch to throw at times. Pass Guerrero and extras down the line. Run will score. But this is a good chance for us to see if Hughes is ready to face big league competition. You know, I go into spring training basically knowing maybe 24 or 25 of our roster spots, but it's still valuable, I think, to at least see what players do when they're facing big league competition, assuming they're still in the game when they're out there. He missed there with the slurve, got strike three. We're going to take that all day long. And now hopefully end the inning with the lead intact. Right to Sweeney, and he did not play it well. Ah, oh, man, and I threw it home. Not that I would have had him anyway. That's a defensive blunder for a guy who was a runner-up as a gold glove player last year. But hey, it's spring training. Gotta knock off the rust and get ready for the season. Hung it right in the wheelhouse. Got away with it. And 0-2, got him that time. Nice job by Hughes. And this one is just a long time coming. Luis Estrella. He's been with us now for a number of years, and he honestly hasn't played that well, and he's also battled through his share of injuries. I want to see him here in the spring. You know, time is kind of running out for him to be a contributor with us. And if he's ever going to have a bench roll of any kind with his speed and power combination, we've got to get closer to it. we got to speed this thing along. 0-2. Taking that one. Inside, and the count goes full for Junk, who's been throwing a lot of Junk since he got ahead in the count. 3-2. and two. That one was smoked, and it's going to lead to uh, a very quick double play. That was 112 off the bat. Okay, the scorecard might not appreciate that, but that'll probably stick in my mind for a little bit. We got to get him in here against his former team. Aaron Ashby was our other free agent signing. It was very simple this year. Go get Logan Gilbert, get Aaron Ashby, and then Fran Mill Reyes. And Ashby is another lefty who can give us multiple innings out of the bullpen, and he's a fairly high overall player. Now, I signed him to a two-year, $15 million contract, and during the offseason, I initially had offered it with an option tacked on for the player. Now, uh, I ended up having an error where, like, the uh, roster was full, so it took away all my offers. When I rebuilt the Ashby contract, I forgot the option, so we actually just got him straight up for two years 15. So he has no option to opt out after this year. And that's good, because I think he'll give us some really good innings and be uh, a really reliable guy who gets a lot of, lot of opportunities. Why the heck are the Brewers hitting this well? They're not doing anything special, they're just getting singles, but still, it's like all the time and they won't strike out another thing too with Ashby is he's done a really good job getting strikeouts in his time in the franchise and I wanted to make sure we could get someone in the bullpen who can help us out with that we got to do better closing out games and I just wanted to get this bullpen right overall now adding one player doesn't really overhaul things but I'm really hoping that some of our young additions, some I haven't talked about yet, can help fill in the gaps because we've got some serious potential now on this team. 3-2. Stevenson. You can trust him to, to strike out. He did it earlier. Can I get it again, please? No! Another soft one to right field. Clifford firing home. And he didn't get him. 
film. I demand a second viewing of that play. No way, man. Clifford threw it on the money. Maybe a little bit to the right. Oh, I think he does. Well, the game is usually right with uh, home safe out calls. So not a whole lot actually to argue there, unfortunately. I'll argue for argument's sake, though, just because I don't like it. Still nobody out. Still frustrated that balls are getting hit to right field. Like, struck him out, finally. <laughs> On the ground, pass Passan. No catch in that speed. Let's go to third instead. It's not my night. And now here's someone who just needs to be better this year than he was in these kinds of spots a year ago. Kendrick Haynes got credited with a fair amount of losses where he gave up late runs. And he just wasn't consistent enough. He's been a very inconsistent pitcher since we acquired him. He's been a closer at AAA for much of that time. And even that has not gone very smooth. So there's no chance of him really being like a setup guy or a closer yet. He's got to really earn that role. Oh, I need to go to first. And he's slow, so despite the hesitation, we still got him. How would you like to play some extra innings baseball in spring training? Fran Mill Reyes, top of the 10th inning, and he is looking to do some damage against a lefty. In the air, center field. This one doesn't have a whole lot of travel. Well, okay, that didn't work. It's spring training for me too, you know. Don't worry, everybody. Your eyes hit a home run and we're fine. But here is Luis Estrella. I'm going to primarily focus on players. We need info one! Blasted to center field! And Estrella off the scoreboard. Or the billboard out there in left center. Holy Toledo, Luis Estrella has hit the ball hard tonight. You know, you talk about some players sometimes in sports where it's like, you know, he's just not good in practice. He needs to be in a game. You know, think of Tim Tebow. Maybe Luis Estrella just can't turn it on unless he's playing at the big league level. What about that possibility? Power and speed can find a role. That's why I've been intrigued with this guy, because he can, you know, be a great pinch runner with 90-plus speed, and then power in the 60s that unfortunately has not gotten better throughout his half a decade here in the organization, but maybe there's still something there. I can see a world where Estrella is at AAA, but as soon as someone goes on the IL, here comes Luis Estrella. He can come up and give you some at-bats and run the bases a little bit. You gotta have some guys down at AAA that are constantly on flights to and from. And I think Estrella can be that guy. I don't think there's room for both him and Fran Mil Reyes. Neither one offers enough defensively. Can we get a 27-man roster, please? I got a hit with Clifford, by the way, who threw a, a ball earlier that I thought was pretty good. Accurate, at least. Don't mind me, just want to get a swing in here with Aaron Dunn. And... Yeah, cut this. What the, was that throw? <laughs> We're keeping it. Avon Melendez will likely be our starting third baseman, or first baseman actually, down at AAA this year. So he's somebody who we'd call up in the event of like a Vladimir Guerrero injury, for instance. Melendez has some power, but he's a, a balanced player on offense. He's got power in contact in the 50s and... He also has uh, the flexibility to play third if necessary. So I believe we got him in the Seth Brown deal. Is that right? Was it Brown for Melendez? Struck him out, though. Well, Monte got him. 
And now we're going to have a pitching change, and it's Gunnar Hoagland coming in. He wants to secure a spot on the roster this year, and I think it's going to be in the bullpen. You know, I am wanting to see Cole Phillips win this battle, but I'll play the better pitcher or whoever I think is better. And Hoagland's still got a chance to make some starts, but he's out of options. He won't be sent down. He'll be picked up in a minute at 81 or 82 overall. So we're hoping that maybe this is the kind of situation he can come into this season. You never know what you're going to get with the bullpen. In the air, center field, Estrella can't get it. Even with his great speed, a run will score. But thankfully, uh, a 27 speed player didn't get a triple. We prevented that. And now he's going to back way up, and Estrella got it to secure the Oakland victory. We got a really good look at a lot of players here in this one game. And Luis Estrella sure had himself a night with that big two-run homer. Hit two balls extremely hard. Ooh, Tyler Soderstrom pulled his calf, and he's going to be out for one to two weeks. So, obviously, we're going to be missing him for a little bit, and we probably need a third catcher then up here with us. I'm just going to bring up Kyle McCann, and it, he's someone we can wave off the 40-man if we need to. It's not a big deal. I would put up Jose Cedeno, but I think this is good time for him to develop, and I don't want to accelerate his, uh, his road to the show, I guess you could say. Now, while we're here, I believe we should also get one more player onto this roster, and that's going to be Gregorio Uribe. I really want to see how far he's come and if he can strike out big league hitters. So he's going to the 40-man. And you'll notice, of course, one player absent is outfielder Eusneel Cruz. I think we all have high expectations, but I'm waiting for the right time to add him to the 40-man I'm confident he'd look good right here in the spring, but we're just not making that move right now. I think maybe mid-season if things go as planned and he can develop his defense a little bit more, that's when it makes sense to get him up at the bigs. Rather than just burn an option now, I don't have questions about his offense. The main thing is I want his defense to be good enough to where he's not a liability out there. I know he's going to hit, but I need the other part of the game too. We've won our first five games of the spring. And in game five, we had Cole Phillips get the start. And he gave up one run over three innings and only striking out one. I want to see some more strikeouts out of these guys. I wanted to get into his next start. I wanted him to already have a, a little bit of playing time here so we could talk about that. But Phillips has been a late addition to the active roster now each of the last two years. And last season, he did a pretty good job in around 22 innings. It was 28 innings last year and 22 the year before. So he ended up making five starts and allowed only seven runs over those starts. No homers, struck out 31 hitters. And three of those five starts were quality starts. So he really made the most out of this time. His one weakness right now does seem to be his walk rate. And I think you just expect that to be something he struggles with. But is he ready at this point? 79 overall and 24 years old. Are you ready to be in a big league rotation? Cole Phillips. Xander Bogarts and the Padres are the opponents today. And already, Phillips having trouble locating a low strike. So let's not pitch low. Right down the middle for strike one. Like my righty on righty sliders. That one is sent way out to right center. And Bogarts really muscled that one to the gap. A lot of players don't have the strength to do that. And it's a lazy fly out for the right fielder. So, another base runner. It's been a theme here in these pitching outings we've had, I guess, today. Ha Sung Kim. The 0-1. Way out in front of it. 
And now, oh, two. Not biting. Not this again, man. Here comes Bogarts. Throw coming in. And again, it's just late. Why is everything the same? Manny Machado. Phillips wild outside once again. And drops in the two-seamer. Manny, a nine-time All-Star now. Under that one, incoming Don. And that'll be out number one. Don't put it there. Tatis still getting his swing warmed up here in the spring. Out in front of it. And Cole Phillips, so two. Just low. And he went around. That is strike three on the changeup from Cole Phillips. Two down. Runner goes. Susak nailed him. Another one hit hard, and this one will be a base hit to left center field. We're not getting one, two, three innings. That would just not be entertaining. Got to keep it dramatic here, I guess. Ty France. Yeah, clipped it, strike two. And to right field we go again. Carlson with a quick catch. Wild swing there by Will Smith. It's an 0-2 count. Nice pitch, but taken for ball one. Takes the change up. And looks at strike three. Out number two. Vaughn hits one hard now. Right center. That gets down. And it's a ground rule double. So we're seeing more balls hit pretty hard here. Trent Grisham now with two in scoring position. Phillips is certainly inconsistent when it comes to getting that just a first pitch strike. And maybe I'm pitching too carefully with him. Maybe that's not his game. Let's go into inning number three after getting that one wrapped up and maybe pitch a bit more aggressively. Let's pitch like he's Joe Michael. You know, maybe he's just not great at hitting the corner, getting ahead, and then getting a batter to chase. Just got to pitch a little bit differently. Well, you got to hit your spot with the slider, man. Come on, you had him 0-2. Bogart's checking in with another double. Not the strongest showing here for Cole Phillips. Really wish he'd do better getting strike one. And when you're ahead of a batter, you gotta put him away. Strike three on Ha Sung Kim. But he's really not sure where his slider's gonna end up, really. So I want to throw it less. Ooh, that one hurts. There you go. Nice job at third base. Right field again. Has a righty pulled a ball today? Carlson almost had him, but we could not play that one cleanly, so a second run comes around. There we go, blowing the fastball by Santander. That one was nowhere close. Nice job there on the slider. One of the best ones he's thrown today. And strike three to wrap it all up. And up and down three innings for Cole Phillips. And he'll get the fourth inning as well. Ty France leads off. Nailed the corner that time. Got him, strike three. Chasing is Will Smith and Phillips. Trying to put him away. Almost got him. Man, they're looking at this fastball like they have no clue it could be coming. That fastball is doing a lot better job with two strikes than his slider ever was. 
Vaughn lifts it to right, and do we have a 1-2-3 inning? Is that even legal? So that was pretty inconsistent, and honestly, if our fifth starter is somebody who is inconsistent and still figuring things out, like, that's far from an awful fifth starter situation. Like, a lot of those starters are figuring it out with every other team, so... We want to give Phillips a shot. Hoagland as well, and here is Reyes driving one out to deep left center field. But again, doesn't get all of it. Luis Estrella. I think my recording just got laggy there for a moment. I hope it hasn't been doing that this whole time. That'd be unfortunate. But Estrella gave us something to be excited about in the previous game. Third round pick in 2023. We're now in year 2028. That one is by him at 92. A late swing. So my fault. Two and two. Fouled back. And if he can just get a piece of it and put it in play, he's got the speed to make some plays happen. And, well, not if it's hit to the right side. That's not going to work. Let's get Robert Poisson in the game now. He's getting close. I think he has one more year of options available, so we're hoping he can start to show that big league upside, even if it's as a backup, because he hasn't really hit the ball well at double A AA or triple A, so he's developed extremely slowly there. He's a good defender, but unfortunately that might be the, the main thing he brings to the table when it comes to the big league roster. So let's get Gunnar Hoagland in there now. He'll make his fifth appearance of the spring, and his appearances have been pretty good. No runs allowed, very low batting averages. I am ready for some 1-2-3 innings. Andrew Vaughn steps in. It's Hoagland versus Phillips. Who's that fifth starter this year? I don't care if we end up going back and forth, flip-flopping. I want... The player in there on opening day, or the fifth day of the year, who gives us a chance to win some games. Struck him out. And he's fallen behind Trent Grisham. It's a 3-0 count. Hoagland is back in the strike zone. Now, what Hoagland has working against him is he's gotten chances in the past, including last year. And he hasn't looked great yet at the big league level. Does strike out Trent Grisham here. He's never been a dominant strikeout guy and just doesn't seem to offer that high-level play very often. He has... 18 quality starts in his time here with the team. He's started 35 games, so I guess he's got that going for him. But nothing has really impressed. And I think you've got to do more than just not fall on your face if you want to maintain a starting spot in this rotation. So I still lean Phillips, but if Hoagland outplays him, then it might be Gunner in that fifth spot. That one is through. A base hit for Luke Voigt. Now, one piece of feedback that I read on the previous video, and I do agree, is that... Oh, it's Logan Davidson. We might have to consider a trade at some point for a closer. If we want to be a serious team, we got to have good late relief options. And you wonder, can Domingo Acevedo continue to do that? He's been fantastic, but to put all your hope on a 73 overall pitcher with C potential, it doesn't sound great when your goal is to go to the playoffs for the first time in the series. Hoagland struck out Davidson. He got three in that inning. Nicely done. We're going to begin the year giving some guys opportunities, and if things don't work out... I think we have the prospects and potential trade options to go and get the right player if he's not currently on the team. We're winning 10-2. to 2. We are dominating spring training. We are going to hoist that Cactus League trophy. 
so high. Two strikes, though, on Fran Mill Reyes. Taking the 12 6. Up there, too high. Count full now. Got him with a good fastball away. Hoagland here in the eighth inning facing Matt Veerling. Nice job getting these swings and misses. I haven't seen this from Gunner before. Not here anyway. He's done pretty well at AAA, always creating hope. But now you got to show it when it counts. Strike three on Veerling. That's four straight. Oh, that should make it five right there. One and two. Five anyway. Down goes Hassel. Will a Padre be able to put it in play? Campusano falls behind. Six straight. Gunner shutting things down. Cactus League action. This is awesome. So we talk about Cole Phillips. I want to basically see him go and win this job. And Gunnar Hoagland is striking out literally every batter in his way. I think there's a pretty good chance that Deshaun Knowles ends up on the team this year. I think that he offers still a little bit of upside and some comparable hitting to a guy like Denzel Clark. So that was a, a short at bat for him. But I think he'll actually make the team this year. If Hoagland strikes out the side again, I'm naming him the fifth starter right here. Gunnar Hoagland has six strikeouts. He has gotten six outs. And now gives up a hit, so I guess no out. Fastball corner strike one. Coming back to seam low to Will Smith. Waving at it wildly, and Smith facing a two-strike count. Oh, it's Pascal off. Don makes the play, and two on now with nobody down. We should probably get somebody warm, and I know exactly who I want that to be. 38 pitches in for Hoagland. Fastball to Andrew Vaughn. Getting ahead now. Trying to get that first out. And caught too much of the plate that time. Flied to Estrella, who will fire it into third base. And you can tell his arm is a major work in progress, like a lot of other outfielders on this team. So let's do a little mound visit here. Gunner could not strike out literally everybody, but it's still been a tremendous outing, I think, for him. And hopefully Gregorio Uribe can finish the job. Uribe was our first round pick back in the year three draft. And that was my reliever draft. Those players are getting ready to start helping us out. And that could be maybe on opening day with Uribe. Or maybe he ends up getting called up down the road. But he's a 69 overall. And in that range, you can start to think about a reliever getting a chance. On one pitch... Got him at second, and the game is over. The two-for-one special to close it up and charge no runs to Gunnar Hoagland. We are cruising through spring training. I love the way the team is looking so far. We're getting a good look at a lot of different players. But yeah, we are steamrolling the competition right now. We're 17-7. and seven. It would appear it's been a, a rough spring thus far for Cole Phillips. He has a 7.47 ERA. He has given up three homers in that time. Walks are still a bit of an issue. He's just not pitching all that effectively. When you compare that to Gunnar Hoagland, Hoagland hasn't allowed a home run. He's striking out a lot. You know, it's small sample size in spring training. We shouldn't run with this too far, but I mean, we're playing these games and trying to make decisions for who should be on the 26th man and the five man rotation. So this is how I usually like to settle things.
Elliot Hughes, yeah, I wish they'd give certain guys more innings, and I guess I could shake up the rotation and stuff like that. Ricky Griggs, really good eight and a third innings so far. Aaron Ashby has been really good. Hoagland hasn't even allowed a run yet. I didn't even realize that. And Gregorio Uribe, 8.2 strikeout rate. Looking pretty good thus far. Switching back to the offense now. Luis Arise is back and still crushing home runs because that's who he is now. 25 last year. Dylan Carlson has four, and it looks like he's having a really good spring. A 524 slugging. Like, I'll take 100 points off of that. I, I just need more than this. Aaron Don is still hitting a whole bunch of doubles after leading the team in that category last season. Trey Sweeney's hitting 400. Deshaun Knowles is hitting 368, trying to secure his roster spot. Yeah, there's an awful lot to like, I think, here from the team in spring. There's one more thing I would like to take care of today. At the end of this year, we're going to have a couple players hitting free agency. I believe Michael Soroka will opt out of his deal and become a free agent. One player who will be a free agent, regardless, is Luis Arise. Unless we do something about that. At this point, we could put together an offer to him. A one-year extension for a little over $8 million. And I think if we can get him under contract for another year, we got to take that. And Arise has signed an extension. I thought that he'd be asking for a lot more money. But we now just basically tacked on a full extra year in his deal of $8 million. So now Arise will not be a free agent after 2028. The way I look at it, we should have a two-year window here at the least. And hopefully it opens up wider than that. But you got Guerrero the next two years. Soroka this season. And then I imagine he opts out. You've got Dylan Carlson. Hopefully he plays better offensively. We got Gilbert, and now secure Luis Arise for another season. I'd like to get in one more outing here with Cole Phillips before we get to the regular season. But it looks like Gunnar Hoagland is running away with today's battle in spring training. Phillips has given us some glimpses of greatness, some pretty good highs, but if he's not ready yet, then we'll either start him off in the bullpen or as a triple-A starter. Nice job against Marsh. I'm not yet decided on what I would do there. I have to do the cuts and just see how the roster comes together. Because I think with Uribe, if he makes the 26, then you can send Cole down. And we got Don headed to the corner here. Going to be a, a tough one that he will not jump after. Way outside to Suzuki. But basically, if Uribe takes up a spot in the bullpen, then uh, maybe Phillips can just go down the AAA. I think he has uh, at least one or two options available, so that wouldn't be an issue. That one finds its way through into center field. Oh, look at Shohei. Oh boy, you don't get away with that one very often. Phillips misses low. Trying to raise his stock with a strikeout maybe of Otani, and he's got him on the outside corner. So where does this leave guys like Miguel Vargas? Vargas, to me, I think I'm running out of patience with this one. He is still looking for pretty good money despite his lack of development and lack of promise that he's shown. And I just signed a rise to an extra year because I can't really trust that Vargas is ready to take over that starting spot a year from now. Ah, I should have been ready for that. That's a money ball right there. Now, of course, I could have waited to sign a rise later, but I didn't want to risk him asking for more money. I'll take my sure thing. I don't need Vargas to work out for 
everything to come together. I just would like for it to happen. But he's someone I am thinking about trading. He has two years left until he hits free agency. He hasn't yet taken that big step. And we're just running out of time with him, I feel, with our development and other guys who are ready. That was bad at bad on my part, making him look worse than he really should. I think I want to pitch Phillips in this game and then Hoagland immediately after. I want to see if Phillips can go five innings in this game. Another hit to right. I am so sick of it. But all right, to Vargas, it will start a 4-6-3 double play. Strike two to Christopher Morell. And the 0-2 is taken low. It was a good pitch, but not good enough. And neither was that one. Struck him out that time. Really good start to this game for Cole Phillips. Third inning for Cole Phillips. And quickly getting ahead. Something he didn't really do in his previous start. Ooh, that's a good one. That's to right. Estrella gets it. I'm sure many of you have also been wondering where the Madden 24 content is. I haven't done anything yet with it on this channel. I've been doing like a lot of testing with things like I do every year. And my project lately has been messing around with the regression sliders. And trying to come up with a solution that I've never had before. Where I can have players like developing quickly while they're young. And then these old running backs get out of here. We don't want you starting at age 33 years old all the time. So I'm working through some stuff on there. So that's been slowing me down. I put out a big player progression video on my main channel. That took a fair bit of time to put together. But for sure I want to get to doing some Madden 24 content over here. And I'm thinking about doing some... Different challenge. Rebuilds! What a catch by Gela! That was outstanding. But as far as getting the Madden content rolling over here again, I got a few challenge rebuilds in mind. And then also I think some fantasy draft teams would also be fun. I haven't done those in a long time. And I enjoy trying to put together a team in fantasy draft and then seeing how it simulates if I can build a winner. Geloff delivers a hit after his brilliant catch. Deshaun Knowles has had a good spring. I think that sets him up for a spot on this team. Oh no, it's into left center. I thought he was getting doubled up. Daniel Susak trying to get us on the board now. And that should do it, just not the way you hope to score. Phillips doing a much better job of getting strike one in this outing. Perhaps he's saving his best for last, but will it be enough? Suzuki. Flied foul into the snack shack area. And another one in that direction. And now flied for Knowles in left center. Got it. Two strikes on Nico Horner. And sharply to Vargas. This is so much cleaner than our previous innings were. And now take two again. Shohei! Right center and built it! It's gone! Estrella can't bring it back. And the Cubs have a run. Foul tip, strike three as Phillips closes down the fourth. But now we got ourselves a tie game. Luis Estrella hitting here in the fourth inning with a runner on first base. 
I want to see him get a chance to run one of these times. One and, one. and he sends it deep in the air to right, and it gets tracked down on the warning track. Can Don get to this one? You bet. He's got the speed. Out number one here in the fifth. So I wanted to see Phillips give us five, and he certainly has the energy to go further than that, the way this is going. I might end up giving him six then, because he has more to show at this point than Hoagland. Yeah, he's not wasting too much time either. I like this. If he could have just been this the whole time, he might have won the battle. Grounded on one hop to Geloff, and got him. There's a good strike as he gets ahead of Seiya Suzuki. One on, one down, and Poisson out at second. Double play! Six really good innings. Just one issue, giving up a homer to Shohei Otani. Let's see if we can get some offense going now. Miguel Vargas will bat here in the sixth. And cranks this one out to left field. Hit pretty well and sends it out. A two-run homer for Miguel Vargas. I believe this year he will start as a platoon hitter. He'll have a chance to get some starts at second base in the outfield. And he'll probably get more chances against lefties because he's hit them pretty well throughout his big league career. And here comes Gregorio Uribe. Looks like righties have hit him pretty good here in the spring, but he has shown himself to perhaps be major league ready at this stage. Facing Pete Crow Armstrong. Not sure if the Cubs are even playing him yet. Every time I look at possible trade options, he's there as someone that they haven't been able to call up, I guess. And he sends one through the infield. Another one to center. That's a base hit getting down. It'll be first and third now. Dansby out in front. What is he doing here late in the spring in this spot? Swanson left field. Don runs it down, but a run will score. Christopher Morell with two down. Uribe trying to get out of here, only allowing the one. Shallow right. Vargas going out. Makes the play. And let's give Elliot Hughes a chance to get a couple more innings before his spring comes to an end. I liked that uh, little bit we got to see of him earlier in the video. Fastball is in there. Nice sinker to quickly get ahead. Gotta break out that slurve again. Can't help myself. And this time it gets launched to Knowles in center, and he makes the catch. Jam to Vargas, got it. And Kevin Alcantara is the batter with two down. Hughes, three and one, jam, foul. Can the slurve end the inning? Yes, it does. Good stuff again from Elliot Hughes. Who's been impressing you most throughout spring training? Let me know down in the comments section. Feeling really good about the roster right now. Luis Estrella. And we looked at strike three. And it's Hughes looking to wrap this game up for us. Right to Melendez, and that's out number two. Really good command of his slurve in this game. It got him strike two. And just misses strike three. 
And that'll do it. Elliot Hughes coming in with two shutdown innings to preserve another spring training win for Oakland. Cole Phillips had himself a really good outing. Not sure it's good enough to secure a starting spot given the inconsistency in the prior games, but good to see nonetheless. And we have wrapped up spring training for the season. I felt like we got a pretty good look at a lot of players I wanted to see today, primarily pitchers. Cole Phillips and Gunnar Hoagland had their battle, and I am naming Gunnar Hoagland the winner. I wish it would have gotten Hoagland more innings, but I'm going to start this year with him in the rotation. And he's out of options, so this is kind of the now or never spot for him. So we're at 38 players. We have to get down to 26. Let's make an easy call here and get Kyle McCann back down to AAA. Avon Melendez hit 429 in the spring. And I think that'll have a, a role in the future, but just not quite right now. Daryl Nyes has been on the team quite a bit in this series, but I think the infield competition's just gotten to be... Maybe a bit too much at times. His defense is really good, but we need more offense. We're getting some of that from Max Muncy and also Robert Poisson had a really good spring. We're going to see if Juan Guerrero passes through waivers as we send him down. Ryan Clifford is going to AAA as well. A lot of players here listed at center field. Denzel Clark will not be making it and he is out of options but i will attempt to pass him through waivers luis estrella i hope that it's not the last we've seen of him we're going to use the last option for robert poisson and hopefully he can do a lot this year at triple a so that he secures a future spot elliot hughes will go down the triple a getting us to 29. I'm going to start Gregorio Uribe this year at AAA, but I think he'll be back at the bigs later this year. This one might be a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to be sending down Alfonso Montez. There are just some areas of his game I'd like to see get a little bit stronger. And now with Aaron Ashby on the team, we have a multi-inning lefty, and that was kind of the Montez role last year. He's got B potential, he's 21. Let's give him a chance to raise his game at AAA for now. And I will be looking to have Cole Phillips start at AAA as well. And this will be his second option used. We're down to 26, and that means Ricky Griggs has made the 26-man roster. What I like about him is he's going to get you strikeouts. And I think... I'd rather have him in this role here than Montez. Now that Ashby is going to be taking up more of a bulkier role, basically. That also means that to start the year, we're going to have Deshaun Knowles making the team as a backup outfielder. Vargas can also play in the outfield a little bit, but Deshaun Knowles has earned a chance now to see if he can stick to the 26-man roster. He hasn't been here at the Bigs since 2026, a couple years ago in the series. We haven't talked much about Max Muncy, but he's going to be the primary backup shortstop. And maybe with a little more development, he'll have a chance to be a future starting second baseman, perhaps. And I've given a little thought to actually spending his first option so he can get more regular playing time. But for the time being, he is the only one here who can play short as a backup. So I'm not making any move like that quite yet. I feel really good about a lot of the players that we ended up cutting from the roster right now, rejoining at some point down the road. But I think we have the 26-man the roster that should start the season for us. And I'm excited to see if we turn that corner this year. I want to see this team become a playoff contender. We have a young team that continues to develop in a lot of areas. We added a key veteran in Logan Gilbert along with Aaron Ashby. Will we see more development out of the youth on this roster? And could we still need to go and make at least one big outside acquisition? I'm looking at this closing role. Acevedo's going to start with it. 
because I don't have anybody else that I am comfortable closing games out yet. I like what Landon Sims showed last year. I think he was outstanding, but it was one year and it was 28 innings. I need to see it for a little bit longer before I replace Acevedo with him. You know I like Acevedo because he gets the job done. We'll see if he's got one more in him. And our season will open with Joe Michael in Athletics Park against the LA Angels. We got a home opener in our new stadium. It's not new anymore. It's a year old. Take on LA, Cleveland, Tampa, and then the Orioles before some interleague action later in April. And we're not going to run into some of our rivals like Seattle. Looks like until early in May. A peek at the September schedule tells us that down the stretch we're going to finish with two road series. The Twins have been a playoff team in here. LA is usually in the wild card mix and so is Seattle. So there could be hopefully some big series late in the season. We're hoping they're big for us at least. But there you have it everybody. The team is set for year six in the franchise. It's been a really fun run so far. But I'm really hungry to get this team some real victories. Do you think we have the team to pull it off this year? Or will the wait continue? That'll do it for me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And please leave a like. Subscribe if you did. Y'all have a great day. And I'll see you on opening day of year six.